Now we turn to an important tool in the study of power series and their applications, which is term-by-term -term differentiation and integration. So if we look at a power series, let's say centered at A to look at the general case, um, with a positive radius of convergence. R might be infinite, but let's disregard the case where R is zero. Then on the uh, interval of convergence, and more specifically throwing out the endpoints on the open interval of convergence, we have absolute um, convergence of the series. And therefore, for each x, the sum of the series defines a value f of x, so that defines a function f of x on that open interval. And it's a natural question to ask whether this function is differentiable. And if it is, whether we can find uh, easily a power series representation for the derivative of that function. Now you see that the function, a function defined as the sum of a power series, is really defined as some sort of um, polynomial of infinite degree. And so, hopefully, we, um, the ideal case would be to write out the derivative the same way we differentiate polynomials, by differentiating term by term, powers of x or powers of x minus a. And we will see that indeed we can do that uh, as long as we stay on the same interval. Another natural question is whether the function is integrable on the interval. Um, in other words, whether it admits antiderivatives on that interval, and if yes, if we can find power series representation for the antiderivatives. And again, uh, polynomials are easy to integrate. We can ask, well, can we integrate essentially the same way for power series? And turning directly to the result, if you have a power series, uh, Cn x minus a to the n, so power series centered at a, which has a positive radius of convergence, this radius could be infinite, but we're going to take um, to um, throw out the case where r equals 0. And we define a function f of x to be the sum of the series on that open interval a minus r a plus r. Then this function f is differentiable on the open interval, and its derivative is given by the sum of the power series from n equal 1 to infinity of n multiplied by cn multiplied by x minus a to the n minus 1. In other words, we start with c1 and then 2c2 x minus a, 3c3 x minus a squared, and so on. So you see that uh, in doing this, really, what we did is differentiate the series by taking the sum of the derivative of each terms. And this remains valid on the same open interval a minus r, a plus r. Now you might be a little bit confused about the indices here, because we started with a series from 0 to infinity, and the first expression for the uh, series representing the derivative of the sum was starting at 1. And then I wrote a second uh, formula where I start at 0 again. Well, this is because if you look at this latest formula, the one in the big red rectangle, then you have uh, the series from 0 to infinity of cn derivative of x minus a to the n. The case n equals 0, x minus a to the n is x minus a to the 0, this is 1, and the derivative is 0. So the derivative of this first term is 0, and so the term corresponding to n equals 0 is 0. This is why uh, we really start at 1, in the expression above, when we have f prime of x is the sum from 1 to infinity of n c n x minus a to the n minus 1. But essentially what we do here to get the derivative is differentiate each, each term x minus a to the n, which gives us n x minus a to the n minus 1. But the very first term, when we had just c0 in the series, well, when we differentiate that, we differentiate a constant, so we get 0. That's why we start at 1. And you see that this series that represents f prime has the same radius of convergence as the original series. Now regarding antiderivatives, um, our function defined by f of x equals the sum from 0 to infinity of cn x minus a to the n admits antiderivatives on the open interval from a minus r to a plus r. And a general formula for the antiderivative is to integrate term by term. It is a series from 0 to infinity of cn multiplied by x minus a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 up to a constant. 
in that series um, as the same radius of convergence R as the original series. So what you have on the left hand side, the integral of f is really integrating a power series, the sum of a power series, and what we have uh, on the right hand side uh, is really taking the sum of cn times integral of x minus a to the n, because integral of x minus a to the n is x minus a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, up to a constant, of course. So to summarize all that, here is our general CRM uh, with the two formulas at the bottom that um, encapsulate the statement. So on the interval, open interval, a minus r, a plus r, to integrate a power series, I take the series of the integral. So in other words, here we uh, extend to power series the observation that when you that for finite sum, if you integrate a sum, it's the same as the sum of the integrals. Here we write that for an infinite sum. We have integral of an infinite sum, and we write that as the infinite sum of the integrals. And similarly, for the derivative, uh, for finite sum, if you have a sum of functions that you differentiate, it's the sum of the derivatives. And here we extend that uh, to infinite sum. We have an infinite sum of functions. We differentiate that, and we get the infinite sum of the derivatives. But this is only for power series and only on this open interval a minus r a plus r. We cannot extend such a statement about commutation of infinite sum and integral and infinite sum and derivatives for any kind of um, infinite series. So this is going to be a very interesting tool. Um, for us to get power series representation for more functions and we will see that they will, this will give us also interesting applications, numerical applications. So for instance we could have we could ask for a power series representation of an antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x to the fourth on the interval negative 1 1. Now you probably don't know how to obtain an antiderivative for this function but that's okay even if we cannot get an antiderivative in closed form, maybe we can find a power series representation for an antiderivative. So in this case, it's relatively easy because 1 over 1 plus x to the fourth, we can write that as 1 over 1 minus something, where this something is the common ratio for a geometric series. In this case, 1 minus negative x to the fourth. So that gives us the sum of the geometric series of common ratio negative x to the fourth and first term 1. In other words, the sum from 0 to infinity of negative x to the fourth to the n, as long as this common ratio negative x to the fourth is less than 1. Of course, what we have inside the series, this negative x to the fourth to the n, can be written negative 1 to the n, x to the fourth to the n, which is x to the 4n, and the condition that negative x to the fourth is less than 1 is the same as the condition that x in absolute value is less than 1. So we get here a power series representation for the function under the integral, 1 over 1 plus x to the fourth. That we knew how to do, we discussed this kind of representation before. But now, the theorem we just have seen tells us that to find an antiderivative, we can just integrate term by term as long as we stay on this open interval from negative 1 to 1. So we get the series from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, and then the antiderivative of x to the 4n, which is x to the 4n plus 1 over 4n plus 1. And that's up to a constant. So the general form of antiderivatives on the interval negative 1, 1. Each one of them can be represented as a power series, and it's a constant c plus the series from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 4n plus 1 multiplied by x to the 4n plus 1. And this is valid on the interval negative 1, 1. So, as long as we're looking at something that happens within that open interval negative 1, 1, we can use such an antiderivative, such a form for the antiderivative. So, for instance, if we were to ask what is the integral from 0 to 1 half of 1 over 1 plus x to the fourth, even if you don't know how to find a, a finite formula for an antiderivative, you're still integrating a continuous function on a closed interval. So, the um, fundamental theorem of calculus applies to the effect that to obtain the value of this integral, you only need to evaluate an antiderivative between 1 half and 0. 
But since we are on the interval 0, 1 half, which is included in our open interval from negative 1 to 1, I can write an antiderivative as the sum of the infinite series from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 4n plus 1, x to the 4n plus 1. And I evaluate that between 1 half and 0. When I plug 1 half for x, I get 1 over 2 to the 4n plus 1 at the bottom. When I plug 0, I get 0 because you see that um, even when n equals 0, I get x to the 1. So all the terms in this series have a non-zero power of x. So when I plug x equals 0, I get 0 for all the terms. So in other words, uh, evaluating this entire derivative between 1 half and 0 gives me one numerical series, no longer a power series because I plug the value for x. It's a numerical series of general term negative 1 to the n divided by 4n plus 1, 2 to the 4n plus 1. And the sum of this numerical series is exactly my integral. So what does that mean? Well, this is very good because even if we don't have an exact value for our integral, we have represented this um, definite integral as the sum of a numerical series. And therefore, we can approximate the value with whatever accuracy we want. In fact, our series uh, converges relatively quickly here. It's an alternating series. So we know how to control the error. Uh, and for instance, um, let's say we take just a couple of terms to see what we get. Let's say we want to approximate our uh, integral by a second um, partial sum. In other words, uh, I'm going to add in my numerical series the term for n equals 0, for n equal 1, and n equal 2. And I want to use that for the uh, for an approximation of my integral. Then the error is the second remainder, which in absolute value is bounded by the first neglected term in my alternating series. In other words, uh, what what we called b n plus one when we were studying alternating series. So the term, the absolute value of the general term for my alternating series. I take the term for n replaced by n plus 1, where n is 2. In other words, when n is 3, I get uh, 4 times 3, 12, plus 1, 13, multiplied by 2 to the 13. So the error is bounded above by 1 over 13 times 2 to the 13, which is in the range of 9 multiplied by 10 to the negative 6. Uh, so in any case, uh, we do better than 10 to the negative 5, which means that our approximation should give us um, four exact decimal places. Now, of course, um, this numerical series is the one I'm talking about when I talk about the uh, second partial sum. So I'm going to write out the, um, the terms in my sum S2. So when n is 0, I get negative 1 to the 0. That's 1 over 1 times 2, that's so just 1 half. When n is 1, I get negative 1 at the top. I get 5 times 2 to the 5, so that's 5 times 30 to 160 for n equal 1. And for n equal 2, I get negative 1 squared, so that's positive 1. At the bottom, I get um, 4 times 2, 8, plus 1, 9, multiply by 2 to the 9, and that's uh, 4,608. And so this sum of three terms is an approximation of my integral with at least four exact decimal places. And that's just three terms, and if we want a better accuracy, we can uh, simply add more terms. So you see that, practically speaking, uh, this is very convenient, that even if we don't know how to uh, find an antiderivative as a function, we can find it as the sum of a power series and for any practical purpose, uh, get something that is pretty much as good as an exact value.